interior and they've always shown lack of interest towards the Nagas. So this is historically available, it is nothing new. And uh, the next case in point is Indira Gandhi. Indira Gandhi was the only PM, Prime Minister of India, who had and exhibited through the emergency dictatorial tendencies. And uh, it was during his, her time as Prime Minister, especially during the emergency, when they attempted to change the constitution of India. So the only Prime Minister who have attempted to change the constitution of India is Indira Gandhi of the Congress. Our Prime Minister, Narendra Modi ji has said recently, as yes, recently yesterday, that as long as he is alive, he will never change or never attempt to change the constitution of India because constitution of India is sacred to the BJP. So for that uh, matter, we want to clarify that for once and all that our respect for the constitution of India is sacred and there is no such attempt. You know, I was particularly uh, mm, reminded of the forced male sterilization program that Indira Gandhi envisaged and uh, implemented during the uh, emergency. Um, it is because they came up with a solution of forced male sterilization to address the population increase in India. So if you look at that period and today, I mean, if you have a policy to address uh, population growth, it is not through forced male sterilization, but the lack of uh, proper policy planning has been clearly exhibited and their intention to force and compare and implement such anti-people agenda was always there from the beginning. It is not a new thing that we see today. And just because they've been in opposition for the past 10 years, um, they cannot change the narrative by coming and rehashing you know, all uh, criticism of other parties, not just the BJP. I would, uh, in reference to the Nagas again, Indira Gandhi imposed the Shillong Accord on the Nagas. We would have had a peaceful future if she had not manipulated to impose the Shillong Accord on the Nagas. Today, any reader or any uh, student of Naga history will tell you that that was a policy error which was initiated and implemented by her during her time as Prime Minister of India. So right from Nehru, her father neglecting the Nagas, adopting anti-Naga policy, she continued that and till today we are facing the consequences of the Shillong Accord because of this people. Compare that to the Prime Ministers put up by the Bharatiya Jana Party. You would see that Atal Bihari Vajpayee during his time as Prime Minister had recognized the uniqueness of Naga history. It's a bold and clear stand taken by the government of India under the leadership of Prime Minister Vajpayee of the BJ. Secondly, refer to uh, 2015 and 2017, Prime Minister Modi had signed the framework agreement and also the agreed position. These are all serious commitment, not just random empty talks, which the UPA did for the past 10 years, they were in power from 2004 to 14, where they did not sign any agreement, where AFSPA was continuing on and on because they had no agenda for the Naga people and also for the Northeastern region. I'd like to take you to <coughs> The reasons why they have been insensitive towards this uh, region. Nehru had clearly stated that he didn't want to develop this region because he feared that India, although it's a, it's a uh, democratic country, would might fall into the hands of the Chinese. And he didn't want to develop this region. Today, after Prime Minister Modi came to power, you would see from zero airport in Arunachal Pradesh to nine airports uh, and uh, mini, uh, you know, airports in Arunachal Pradesh. You will see that the BJP has performed miraculously in terms of the development of the Northeast region under Prime Minister Modi. And compared to, uh, I will come back to that, compared to the Congress uh, UPA time, 
a prime minister who was made a Rajya Sabha MP from Assam did not think of notice as his home. Although it was his adopted home. He was a Rajya Sabha uh, MP from Assam and he was prime minister for 10 years. Did he even come once as a sitting prime minister to the state of Nagaland? No. Prime Minister Modi came to Nagaland in 2014 in his first year as the Prime Minister of India to inaugurate the Hornbill Festival. And if you remember, the Prime Minister Manmohan Singh uh, of the UPA, from Manmohan Singh, just did not show any interest for the Nagas, the Naga people, and the state of Nagaland. They were only looking east, saying that India is going to use the northeast as a land link to Southeast Asia towards the development of the economy of this region. He was only looking. When Prime Minister Modi came in 2014, Kisam, during the Hornbill Festival, December 1, he said, from today, in Kohima, in Nagaland, I will rephrase our agenda and our narrative for this region and for the country by changing the term look is to act is policy. A significant policy change in terms of international relations was made in Nagaland for the first time in the history of India or modern India. Would such a policy change happen during the Congress time? Have we forgotten what the Congress has done to the state of Nagaland or to the Naga people? Some may forget because they have collective amnesia. But majority of Nagas cannot forget our history, our past, and the Congress attitude towards the Naga people. We cannot forget. You see, I'll get back to that. But today, their lapidacial approach and attitude towards the Naga has been exhibited, has been shown, is recorded, and we cannot forget, no young Naga or old Naga will forget what they have done towards the Nagas. When they got the opportunity for 10 years, they were busy looting the country, 2G, so many schemes. All of you know, we need not mention any one of them. And today they are talking of corruption. Corruption is in the Congress DNA. Everyone has seen that. Suruji Wala came here. He is also a dynast like uh, Rahul Gandhi. His father was also a minister. And Naga people do not believe in dynastic policy, politics. Even if you are chief minister, there is no guarantee your son will be available. Also. It is not in Naga culture. Without knowing Naga culture, they are talking to us and lecturing to us about Naga culture. First, they don't understand the basic, uh, uh, you know, the principles of Article 371A. Who has said in the BJP that we will remove Article 371A? Please tell us. Show us the report. Prime Minister has said we will safeguard the interest of the people of this region, of Naga, Nagaland. And he has uh, steadfastly maintained that. BGP has been in the government for 10 years. 10 years we had majority government in the parliament. Have we ever tried to uh, change the constitution of India? Although we had the majority. I remember in 2014 when uh, Amit Shah ji was uh, the president of the BJP. He came to Dimapur and Chumuki Dimapur. We had a meeting and he said, nobody will force you to stop your culture. Whether it is in choosing what to eat or in deciding what to wear, it is up to you. It is a free democratic culture, a country, and we are here only to strengthen the hands of democracy. Has there been any proof? There has been loose talk and all this propaganda against the BJP is because there is no agenda there in the Congress party today. I would not like to go into what is uh, going to be uh, the situation of the country post election because it's already clear to the nation. Today at 10 a.m., Rahul Gandhi gave a press conference in UP. He said, I don't do poll predictions. Then the next statement he made was, I think BJP is going to get 140 to 150. He started doing prediction. He himself is saying, I don't do poll prediction. And he's saying that 
party will decide whether I will contest in Amity or not. Whereas when Himanta Bishwa Sharma went to meet Sonia Gandhi after getting clearance from uh, the cheat scam uh, fund allegation, he went to meet uh, Sonia Gandhi. Sonia Gandhi said, uh, you met me good, but and this is on, on TV. This has been, uh, this came out in the recent India Today interview with Himanta. He said, uh, Sonia Gandhi said, you go and meet Rahul Gandhi. You be friends with Rahul Gandhi. And I, I don't want to get into all the details, but you see, by saying that CEC will decide we are a carrier based part, uh, party, I mean, everyone in the country who loves the nation and the growth and the future of this country are leaving the Congress party. There is a mass exodus of Congress leadership in the BJP or other parties today. So, by saying that he's only belying the truth within the party. Why is he contesting from Vienna when you know the basis of his or the primary uh, place where he contested is uh, Amity? So a leader who is running away from his home because he is rejected cannot lead this country. And today the Congress cannot come and lecture us about our culture because they don't understand the basic tenets of Naga culture. If they knew, they would not be talking like that. I, as a Congress, uh, this, uh, as a, I was observing, as a Congress leader, yeah. this uh, Surjewala say in yesterday's week, a lot of things uh, which actually sounded demeaning. There is that attitude of, uh, you know, uh, looking down on the Nagas. And I don't think any young Naga can accept that. It's okay. We are not going to attack them on their personality, attack the candidate on their personal issue. We are only taking issue with the issues they have raised. So why are you doing that? You know, he could not even pronounce the name of Superman. So he was searching for a shortcut and calling him Superman. You know. I would want the MP from Nagaland to be articulate in the parliament. He is not going to speak in the parliament in Nagamish. And if he is part of the ruling MD, there are things that he can do for the state of Nagaland that Congress cannot even do. So I think there is no alternative, but all this baseless allegation is something which we need to understand because the insensitiveness and uh, you know, the lack of concern of the BJP, uh, of the Cong Congress for the state of Dhaka is apparent. Uh, there was a time when <coughs> Manmohan Singh was Prime Minister. He never bothered to come even once. Prime Minister Modi ensured that all the sitting ministers and MPs of uh, the BJP and NDA government should visit all the northeastern states every month. From having no union ministers coming to our place, Forget about the Prime Minister during the UPA time. We have many leaders coming, many ministers coming. And what did it do for the state of Nagaland and the Northeastern region? Instead of depending on third source, fourth source, to understand the development happening on the grassroots, they came so first and, and there were many decisions which were taken based on their visits, which enabled and helped the development of this region, all the North. I want to recall and I want, to, I want the people of Nagaland to recall. There was a time when a lot of issues were raised by citizens, uh, including a cow on the roads uh, you know, sector in Nagaland. Mm -hmm. You know, when Gadkari came, I didn't know also, but he said a special purpose vehicle called NHIDCL was created only for the development of roads in the northeast. And he has actually already sanctioned 15,000 crores for the state of Nagaland. During the UPA time, unheard of, impossible. I, in my entire adult life, and I guess it's the same as, uh, it's the same for all of us who are from Nagaland, who have not seen four lane roads. Today, whether it's on the completion or not, it's not because of the central government, it's not because of the state government. 
There are some land owner issue, meaning it is our people who have land owner issue, who are using the weapon of customary laws to assert their rights. Meaning Article 371A is very active in the state of Bangladesh. But the roads, which I have not seen in my entire life, has been built. Vajpayee when he was Prime Minister, came to Nagaland in 2004 and he went by road from Dimapur to Koyma because this weather was bad, he could not take the chopper. And he saw that, and he told our Chief Minister then that if this is your best road in Nagaland, I wonder what other road condition would be. And he promised that I'll make this Koyma Dimapur road four lane road. But unfortunately, UPA came to power. For the next 10 years, they slept on it. Only after Prime Minister Modi came to power and uh, established this National Highway Infrastructural Development Corporation <coughs> Limited, a special purpose vehicle for the roads in Northeast, did the construction start. And I'm happy that this is not just the only four lane road we have. We have four lane road in uh, Dimapur uh, to Chumugirima, Kuragla to Chumugirima. Then the other Khatkati to uh, Patkai Bridge also has started. <laughs> Only those who are blind to development will ignore that this has happened during Prime Minister Modi's time. Only those who don't want to see the development that is happening now will, will talk about it. I've been a legislator, I go to my villages, I meet the villagers. One thing, 10 years ago or 11 years ago, I never saw tap water connection in the kitchen kitchen sink. Today, wherever I go, because of Jal Jivan mission, because of the coverage it has given, we see that when we have food, we can wash our hands in the basin of the kitchen. Because there is tap water right in your kitchen. And how difficult it is, people from rural area will understand. How difficult it is to go fetch water. Think about the old people who would find it difficult to fetch water. Basic needs of the people have been met. The most difficult problem of both the politicians and the bureaucrats and government servants in Nagaland or even entrepreneurs who are doing well is your relative who is sick and has no money to address his health issue. When Ayushman Bharat came, health insurance was given to everybody. Today I know many people who have benefited from Ayushman Bharat. They've gone to hospitals without having to depend on their relatives. What about the sense of pride infused in them because of this independence in terms of financial support? This has not happened before. And you know, housing for rural poor, that has tremendously affected people in all areas of Nagaland. Go to village after village, you will see the development. Nobody will say that Modi is bad in the villages. Only those who are in town, only some who are with the Congress will say negative things about development. Why? Because they are anti-development. They don't want development. They want our people to remain poor and not access facilities like other parts of the country because they want us to remain poor. And they'll talk about issues which are not relevant in the state of Nagaland. I've been a Christian all my life. I've been in BJP for 11 years. I'm still a Christian. If anything happens to Christians in uh, any part of the world, I'll be the first one to raise my voice in support of my Christians, Christian brethren. Isolated events where law and order is already there addressing the, uh, that has been blown out of proportion. And I don't think that is the way we play our politics in the state of government. I think our rights are very important. Our issues are very important. Forget about our rights and issues. They didn't even want to look at uh, this state as a state of importance for them. For the 10 years they were in power. The Gandhi family has been saying so many bad things about our lives because they simply cannot believe that somebody from a poor background can become Prime Minister of India. They believe in the American dream. But they don't think that there is an Indian dream. There is a vast difference between those who know the pulse of the people and those who refuse to acknowledge the pulse of the people. There is a vast difference. That is the difference between Congress and the BJP. And just because you get a platform in Nagaland, I want to tell you when J.B. Nada came, he said he will come. He said I will come and address the people of 
Nagaland. Although we are supporting our NDA partner, NDPP, we are not contesting. NDPP is contesting, but we stand with them. And I will tell you the reason why. But before that, I will tell you, Nada said he will come and he came. We had four hours of rally. There were two phases. First phase, second phase, people came and some people left. I was shocked that in yesterday's campaign by the Congress, they were saying there are so many non locals. You know, Dimapur is a city where both Nagas and non Nagas stay. There are non Nagas who met and who has made Dimapur their home. How can you dehumanize them by calling, by uh, looking at the rally and uh, talking about them in Nagaland? We consider every citizen who stays in Nagaland is a citizen of Nagaland, irrespective, irrespective of which community. And you know why they are saying that? Because these people came out of love and respect for the BJP and they came to show their support for Nadaji's visit. But the Congress are belittling them by saying that they are plain man, they are not Nagas. They are citizens of India, they have voted. They have voted. And they came to Kastir. The other funny thing I uh, noticed was that in the front you would see and in the sides you will see a lot of BJP uh, workers, karyakartas from the Naga community. Even Chief Minister Ryu was there, Deputy CM Y Patan was there. There were so many Naga leaders there. By saying that there are no Naga leaders, are you saying that Ryu is not Naga? What kind of implication is that? What kind of politics is that? You know, let's talk about issue. Let's not personalize. Because one cannot forget our past. Was our involvement in the past not in the politics of the state of Nagaland? I think people living in glass houses should be careful about what they say about our present leaders. If you have an issue, raise that issue. It's okay. It's a democratic country. It's a free country. We can have debates on any issue. But dehumanizing the non-locals in Nagaland who are also contributing, you know, is because they want to promote only illegal migrants from Bangladesh. The Congress are interested in uh, ensuring that they come and stay here and take over the jobs which are meant for our local people. They will support that. They will support all these uh, illegal activities because they have no agenda for the people of that. It is very clear. Now, I want to make one significant point. In, from 2003, when Nifu Ryu became the Chief Minister of Nagaland, I'll tell you, unwaveringly, he has been with the NDA from 2003. When there was UPA government for 10 years, he was still in NDA. The Congress had actually imposed President's Rule 1 when he was Chief Minister, before it. Because you have, you didn't have the mandate, you wanted to steal the mandate. NDPP under Rio has ensured and has demonstrated that they will never try to steal the mandate of the people. They will win it because they have earned it. Your propaganda will not work because the fact of the matter is clear to every Naga citizen. And I will also appreciate that even during the darkest hour, yes, he was with the BJP. Our party believes in honoring our alliance partners. Our party believes in supporting our alliance part partners no matter what. Therefore, till date, we stand firm with the government of Nifirio and his NDPP party as partners in NEDA. Because of the cozy relation we have, we've been able to address the unaddressable problem of Assam Nagaland border issue, the oil expectation, uh, exploitation which was also affected by the border issue. In the past, they were not talking. They were not talking to each other. There was always some skirmishes, some problem in the border. But when two alliance partners came to power, there was a clear instruction from Amit Shahji that all the NEDA chief ministers should sit down and address these issues amicably. So there has been a series of talks. And while 
our issues were represented. You would not know. You ask people from the villages who crosses Assam to go to their villages, who crosses Assam to go to Mon, to go to Longland, Mukchung, Mokha, especially Assam Nagaland border. How many of them were harassed by Assam police for small or no reason at all? Today, that has stopped. Or at least, that has been minimized. Because of this border discussion between our state government and the Assam government. Because we are part of the NEDA alliance. So these things have changed and helped us uh, improve the lives of our people. So any relation that exists today. You, know, you cannot take some issue in Israel or in Russia and come and talk about uh, talking about the Tad in other ways. Let's focus on our state. And he has been steadfast. He has been uh, really supportive of Prime Minister Modi. I tell you, today he is the longest serving and also the tallest Chief Minister of Northeastern region. With every other Chief Minister respecting him. That teacher itself ensures that we have very good neighborly relations with all our neighbors. And it has gone a long way in ensuring that our future is also, and the youth our future. Because see, a lot of our youth go out of the state of Nagaland. Unless the state to state relation is there. There are many issues that may come up, but how will you address those? So he has been able to address because of the fact that he has been in, uh, uh, in the alliance. Now, um, I would like to end or maybe stop for some time before I take questions. Uh, uh, about the present Lok Sabha election in Nagaland, uh, it's not just the BJP, the NPF. The uh, NPP, RPI, NCP, JDU, and Independence are all supporting our candidate. The entire legislature of the state is supporting our candidate. Because we want somebody who will be able to go and articulate our rights and our needs in the parliament. The parliament of India is not a small place. We need somebody who can stand up for us, who can speak for us on the issues that we hold in. Not just criticize people because we are free to criticize, but take up those issues for the state of, uh, for the people of this state. So let us not trivialize our elections. Let us not trivialize another people just because you don't like us. Let us not trivialize them. So it's my fervent, fervent appeal to the people of Nagaland that as you have imposed your faith in the leadership of if you hear, I also appeal to you that you support the candidature of Dr. Chimen Mori, NDPB candidate for the upcoming Lok, Lok Sabha election, because we have only two days to go. And let us vote the interest of Naga people to power. I would like to ask if there is anyone who would like uh, to so Well, I want to supplement a little on the historical background of uh, the Nagas that our Sir Mongumo has just, uh, just, just stated. Uh, in the year 1951, we are all aware that Nagas had conducted voluntary plebiscite on the 16th of May 1951. And in the year 1952, on 11th March, a Naga de a delegation went to meet the then Prime Minister of India, the Congress Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, in Delhi. They have submitted a resolution that Nagas want to stay out of India as a separate sovereign nation. After submitting the resolution of the Naga plebiscite that was voted, that was participated by more than 99% of the Nagas, Nehru, instead of listening to the voice of the Nagas, sent 10,000 of troops to the state of Nagaland to suppress the Naga political rights. And we all know history cannot be forgotten. I wonder how the Congress could say, could so shamelessly say that they love the Naga people. How could they even say that? Had they forgotten how much we had suffered during Nehru and Indira, Gandhi, Indira Gandhi's time? Was it not the Congress government that had tried to destroy and suppress the Naga political rights for freedom? Was it not the Congress that had promulgated a state of emergency President's rule in the state of Nag Nagaland during the prime ministership of Indira Gandhi, 1977 to 19 1975 to 1977. Have we forgotten all that? 
Have we forgotten how our women were raped under this Congress regime by the armed forces? Was it not the Congress who had enforced the Draconian law, which is called the Armed Forces Special Power Act of 1958? Was it not the Congress? How could they so shamelessly come and say and proclaim that they love the Nagas and that they are going to solve every of our problem once they are elected to power? They should know that Naga people have voted them out of power. It is they themselves that has voted themselves out of power. For 15 years, they don't have a single representative in the state of in the state Nagaland Na Legislative Assembly. And here we are looking at all the election really that has been going on. We don't want to degrade ourselves to counter every of their statements, but they have gone overboard. And today, we came here to address these issues. They should not claim that they love the Nagas. They should not forget that because of their rule, because of the enforcement of Armed Forces Special Powers Act, because of their military rule, Nagas were nearly destroyed in the 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s. We have not forgotten that. I for, I for one cannot forget it because my father himself had gone through all those and I am a living witness to what the Nagas had gone through. It was during the Congress time that the churches in Nagaland were changed into concentra concentration camps. It was during the Congress rule that Naga women were raped, Naga men were rounded in the village and the villages were burned, Grand our granaries burned. The Naga men were rounded up and tortured hang upside down the whole day. Some of them were smeared with king chili on their manhood. Some of them were skinned alive. Some of them were burned alive. Some of them were buried alive. Some of them sold in two. We have not forgotten that. We have never, we will never, this generation will never forget what the Congress government had done to the people of Nagaland. And I tell you today, it is their arrogance and their vindictiveness that will destroy themselves, that will defeat them. We should not forget that we have suffered, Naga people have suffered in the hands of the Congress people. And they should not come here claiming that they love the Nagas and they are here to solve every of our problems. That is completely baseless and false.